Morning, hope you are well. It is Wednesday 31st of July and obviously an important day for markets because we've got the FOMC later on this evening. Uh, just to inform you, we will be covering that live. Both Sam and I will be here throughout the evening uh, doing it live via YouTube. So do make sure you join us for then. We'll also have a chat facility where you can ask us questions, but we'll cover the whole event in the build up, the preview, the live release, and then a, a kind of a debrief after of how the markets have reacted. Uh, but coming back to the, the here and now, a couple things obviously to talk about, as you can see here, Trump lashing out at China as those trade talks resume. However, as I'll update you as we go through the briefing, apparently uh, the US envoy has left. Today was supposed to be the second day of trade talks happening in China and only about half an hour ago, latest comment out of a Bloomberg journalist suggested that China-US talks have ended and US officials have left for the airport with no official comment. And so therefore an abrupt finish to these latest face-to-face -face negotiations. Uh, no official word as yet. Uh, we have had the Chinese foreign ministry say the US is the side that flip-flopped in trade negotiations during the past year adding that progress in talks can only be achieved when the U.S. shows some uh, sincerity and good faith. So <laughs> quite a quick finish to those talks. And I would say unsurprising, um, as I'm going to discuss shortly, Donald Trump um, went on a bit of a, a tweeting tirade yesterday, uh, predominantly aimed at China. So um, I don't really think it's too surprising, but ultimately a breakdown once again. Uh, of one of the key top level macro kind of risks in markets doesn't bode well for just general sentiment overall. Um, but looking at the charts this morning, um, one thing that's noticeable is um, oil's a little higher. We've had the seventh straight stockpile decline in the API data last night. So we'll look at those numbers shortly. But um, WTI crude as well, technically breaking above some key levels. So we're up about 37 cents, 58.42 down here at the bottom. Uh, otherwise, cable very quiet, a day of consolidation very much so yesterday after um, a very big beginning of the week to the downside, that technical breach of that level, the fundamental kind of repricing of no deal uh, has all kind of been accounted for, at least for the moment. So not too much movement in the FX markets. Uh, equities, despite the trade comment, um, global stock futures did see a slight move lower about 40 minutes ago. However, we still remain in slight positive territory across the board, um, in the US futures at least, some outperformance in the NASDAQ. We did have Apple report after market. We're going to have a look at their numbers, uh, but they moved higher in excess of 4% last night. Uh, so maybe mitigating some of that. Uh, negativity from the breakdown in the trade side. Some positive numbers coming up, Apple. Um, however, starting off with the Asian session, a few things to be aware of. Firstly, um, Hong Kong, shares in China and Hong Kong were weighed down by news that the Politburo, uh, which is generally the, uh, the top of the pyramid in terms of who defines policy in China, they pledged to avoid applying stimulus to the property market property market obviously under pressure given the economic slowdown being experienced in China but China saying well, they're not going to backstop that with further stimulus then Hong Kong the Hong Kong exchange was actually shut early today uh, had to close ahead of the normal scheduled time due to a tropical storm hitting the area uh, meanwhile elsewhere in Korea Samsung shares slid on the back of a decline in profits um, so, and then you've had this latest breakdown now with the uh, US-China trade talks. So quite a few negative things developing overnight in Asia. However, maybe the saving grace being the, the stellar performance from Apple reporting after market last night. Um, so I'm going to go straight into some of those headlines. We'll talk about them a bit more. As per usual, I'll leave the charts uh, and the trade setups to, to Sam. So let's start off with with Trump. Um, I was trying to think about this last night because yesterday Trump, I counted it last night. I'm not sure if he did more tweets obviously before I went to bed last night, but last yesterday Trump did about, well at the time, 32 tweets. 32 in one day. 
Um, he was, when he first became president in 2016, averaging about six at that time. So obviously you can expect um, the frequency of tweets to increase probably even further now that this political campaigning period is underway for his second term for 2020. Um, but importantly, yesterday, he absolutely lashed out at China uh, through a series of tweets. I'll give you a little bit of a flavor here. He said, China is doing very badly, the worst in 27. He's referring to the fact that their GDP is the lowest in 27 years. Uh, then he added that was supposed to start buying our agricultural products now, but no signs they are doing so. That's the problem with China. They just don't come through. Our economy is much larger than the Chinese. Then he just goes on and on in a series of other tweets, just basically criticizing China. Um, the one thing then, the Chinese Foreign Ministry, after these latest reports that both Mnuchin and Lighthizer have left to head to the airport in an abrupt finish to these talks, is this idea that the Chinese Foreign Ministry have said that they're not really, it's, it's the US who are at fault, they're not showing any sincerity or good faith. Uh, and you know, let's not forget the cultural differences between uh, the Chinese and how keeping face is particularly important. Uh, and certainly for a Chinese government ruled in the way it is under Xi's ruling, um, he definitely would not want to be showing or being seen to be pandering or showing concessions to the Americans, to the, the domestic kind of public. So yeah, complete breakdown in these trade talks. Um, the soybean issue that Trump's talking about, um, this is, I thought we'd have a, a quick look. Um, this is looking at China's imports of U.S. soybeans have now dropped to their lowest since at least 2004. Uh, and this is one of the things of which, according to Trump, that China had promised that they would continue buying. Uh, and, and so the show goes on, so to speak. So I definitely would keep an eye out for any further developments on this matter as we go through today. But ultimately, probably, as we go later on into the, the afternoon London time, um, people will be sitting on their hands waiting for the Federal Reserve announcement for later this evening. Interestingly as well, um, and again, from a rhetoric point of view, you're probably going to get more of this. Um, those uh, four ladies who've been uh, targeted by a lot of the, the Trump uh, contingent in regards to their being multicultural and of different uh, religious faiths. Uh, but apparently Trump was at a campaign rally last night and they were chanting, get her out, get her out. And pff, you're going to get a lot more of this. Uh, the point I want to make here is not really a political one, but from a market's point of view, you know, the, the, is this going to really um, feed through into impacting markets, this kind of quite racially... Um, I guess, hostile environment as was going to no doubt surround this campaign period for Trump. Uh, I think not. I mean, I think everyone's aware of the status quo of, of what he's aiming for and who he's trying to appease to get him over the, over the line politically. So the point being is as much as you're going to hear lots more of these types of stories, and it might sound quite, um, quite outlandish, the point being is from a market's perspective, uh, that's not really what matters. From a market's perspective, it's about this trade war for the moment. Uh, and the latest with that is that talks have broken down once again. Uh, looking elsewhere, let's have a look at Apple. So Apple shares actually rose in excess of 4% after the closing bell. Uh, so a positive development for the fangs uh, in that respect. And importantly, and we were talking about this in the, the briefing yesterday, about how Apple was in a quest to diversify their income stream away from the iPhone. And Apple generated less than half of its total quarterly revenue from sales in the iPhone for the first time since 2012. Uh, and I think that's quite a meaningful uh, and symbolic shift for the company. Uh, they reported a record $11.5 billion in sales of services in Q3. So a record level, as we were saying, in these service products, which they're really trying to push at the moment. 
A um, couple of other things, Apple's two major independent product lines not attached to the iPhone, Mac computers and I iPads, they only made up about 20% of the company's revenues. So what quite a few people are looking at is the fact that if you look at the wearable devices, i.e. the watch, if you look at AirPod headphones, which have been particularly successful, these are all things that do still require an iPhone. So they can't work in isolation like a Mac computer or an iPad. So a lot of what people are looking at from Apple in the longer term perspective is they're going to have to start breaching out into having some of these products available to work on other operating systems and platforms. So removal away of the kind of Apple ecosystem in that respect to try and capture some of that other market. Um, revenues from the smartphone uh, did decline 12% in the quarter from a year earlier. So we are still looking at the fact that iPhone, the iPhone 10 in particular has struggled. But Apple has said that this year's efforts to rejuvenate sales with discounts, more financing options and trading programs is being effective, uh, at least for the time being. So yeah, good news for Apple overall. Uh, and interestingly, this ambition to restructure almost their revenue streams seems to be paying dividend, at least for the moment. Looking elsewhere, a couple of other headlines to be aware of. Uh, a few people putting this around this morning, uh, looking at the fact that China's uh, is the highest ratio of firms in China forecasting earnings decline since 2016. Uh, this comes as deadline for companies to report their earnings is at the end of August in China. So profit warnings signaling more gloom for their, their local economy. Uh, you'll remember 2015, 2016 was very much defined by an era of a potential crisis of a hard landing in China. And we're just moving up in towards that kind of area now as we've got to 40%. The ratio of firms that report a deterioration in their first half uh, earnings. So again, Chinese economy still warrants close monitoring um, from an economic data point of view as we continue to go forward. Um, I'm not actually going to do much at all in terms of discussing the Fed because I hope that all of you will join us this evening. 6.30 p.m. will kick off uh, live on YouTube. 7 o'clock London time is the main part of the announcement. And we'll do a full briefing then. But overall, um, I did send out to the, to the Amplified Traders the, the decision day guide from Bloomberg. You can have a read of that in advance. But from a overall top level perspective a rate cut is 100 percent expected today from the federal reserve the baseline expectation is for 25 basis points uh, the federal funds futures are priced of a probability of that at 76 percent a 50 basis point cut at 24 percent more importantly is going to be the subsequent language that surrounds this rate cut about the intention of further rate cuts in 2019. That's basically the summary. We'll go into the details of exactly how they might convey that when we do the session later on this evening. Oil traders, WCI crude, probably the standout of the morning on the charts to get things underway in UK and Europe. You can see we've seen a, a decent breach of the high the um, resistance area of yesterday's price activity around its respective R1 on Tuesday. We have broke through that yesterday evening and then we've added some as the API numbers last night reported a seventh straight stockpile decline. And with that, we saw a drawdown of 6 million. Expectations were for a drawdown of just 2.75 million. Cushing a draw of 1.5. Gasoline a draw of 3.1. Distillates a draw of 890,000. So a full house, if you like, of bullish data. The crude and gasoline this time both supporting the same directional movement in what otherwise has been in recent weeks of conflicting signals. So a, a bullish kind of signal there setting us up for the DOEs, which we're going to get later on. And then, not sure if you caught this yesterday on Twitter, but our head of trading peers put out his latest sterling call. Um, you know that when this happens, you've got to pay attention because he doesn't tweet that often, but when he does, more often or not, he is right. He said, I quote, Sterling finally under pressure this week. I think more downside to come. I expect Boris Johnson to call a general election 
by the latest 29th of August for a 3rd of October election, leaving four weeks until the 31st October deadline. Uh, I guess he's justifying that on the basis that legally, I think it's a period of about five weeks, technically in order for a general election to take place. So he needs to announce it well before the actual deadline uh, takes hold. Piers then adds that I expect Sterling one more leg lower ahead of the general election on no deal Brexit panic. He's looking for a break of that post-EU referendum double bottom at 120 and looking for a test of 115. Again, looking to target the psychological handles here, given the fact that my charting system doesn't even go back far enough for me to look the last time we were below 120, um, given the fact that, what was it Sam? Three decades, 35 yeah, 35 year low when we're at 120. So you've got to go back obviously a long way to get to that point. So yeah, just thought I'd point that out. Obviously you can jump on his Twitter account, his handle at Piers Curran if you want to if you want to check that out and look at the annotations on the chart that he did. Um, calendar wise today, just quickly, uh, obviously the Fed, the main event. So I would stress that given the importance of the announcement tonight, because it is going to be a really interesting one, there's a lot for the Fed to manage in market expectations about not so much the cut, but about what they're going to do for the rest of this year that's going to make it particularly interesting. So for this morning, a couple things. Um, first of all, just quickly, you did have Australian CPI data overnight. That's already come out. Um, came in at uh, 0.6 quarter on quarter and 1.6 year on year. So both metrics were 0.1 higher than expected. Hence, you've seen some appreciation in the Aussie dollar overnight. Going further forward into the morning, you've got some German data coming up, the unemployment change and rate just before 9 a.m. London time. You then get the flash Eurozone CPI at 10 a.m. That will be important. That would be an interesting figure. Do keep an eye on European assets for the release of that at 10 a.m. Uh, then, though, going into the afternoon, you've got the DOEs, but then the main focal point of the session, the Fed, 7 o'clock, will be going live at 6.30. Excuse me. A uh, couple of earnings as well, just to wrap things up. Still pretty busy on the earnings slate from UK, Europe, Switzerland, you've got this morning, couple of the outperformers, Air France up two and a half, Credit Suisse up 2%, Airbus up one and a half, L'Oreal down 4%, and Lloyd's in FTSE down 3.3% at the open. Um, US earnings to look out for today, the big guys would be General Electric, Qualcomm uh, would be the ones I'd be watching most closely. Okay, that's it from me. Let me hand you over to Sam. And hopefully I'll see you in the chat room and I'll catch you guys later this evening for the full Fed release. Hi everyone, uh, we're, we're doing well. Just uh, to start off with the, the pound here, and I just posted this in the, uh, in the chat room. Just trying to have a little, little break higher out of this. Uh, well, the trend comes down from the low that we had back on Monday, you can see just getting a break of that around, well it's coming in around 95, so only 7 ticks above, but we were just getting squeezed in from both directions there and you can see I uh, decided to have the, the initial break to the upside, of course this is not to say we've now seen the, the low of the pan and we continue to, to push higher, but certainly those levels we were half waiting for yesterday may well now come into play. And, the, the low that we did have back on the Monday around 4 o'clock coming in around the R1 uh, would be an area to consider. Of course, to get through there, you've got yesterday afternoon's high at 18, uh, about 20 ticks above here, which could be of interest as well. To the downside, and this might be more favourable, looking for continuation uh, of uh, this pound weakness, a break of this trend line here to really target the, the low of the year as well could be a good opportunity. Of course, Fed Day though, so it wouldn't be too surprising to see us uh, range bound choppy price action in the build up to that. Uh, data as well, nothing out of the UK, uh, and you've got the, the Bank of England tomorrow, so it might well be just to, to not go chasing too much, and even a break of the lower trend line, not to get too aggressive, but certainly that is an opportunity uh, should we, we see any increase in volume break of that trend line to target the uh, the yearly low there uh, as well. Elsewhere, just probably coming up to retest a, a level now. The, the briefing yesterday, we were just talking 
uh, when I came on about how the the S and P had just broken a, a trend line and it never recovered. It never recovered from that. The DAX is really leading the way. That break of the trend line and the pivot saw us push lower and almost got down to the uh, the three thousand handle this morning. Similar in that. Oh, let me just put this on a fifteen minute. We did have a, a break of this trend here. And you can see really well respected. Let me just put that in the right place. Really well respected from yesterday's low to the Asian session low to just before uh, 7 o'clock. We got those three strong tests. Then the breakthrough uh, there as well. It'll be worth keeping an eye. What happens when we come back to, to retest this trend line? At the moment, that looks like it'll be coming in well, we need a kind of the high of the day as well, but 30.19, so that's somewhere to, to mark up on the chart. We're just finding resistance at the area of support before that breakthrough uh, as well for the S&P. Uh, as a line in the sand, I think that's as good as any with the high of the day. You can see if we were to, to break above the, the high, you've got quite a, a nice bit of resistance from yesterday morning as well. Uh, and then if that was to, to push on, then suddenly you're looking towards 30.24. Um, longer term, we'll do some levels as we approach the uh, the Fed. But of course, if they were ultra dovish, we still have that top of that trend line coming in around 30, 34. The uh, the multi year one. Let's just have a quick look at that just to to put that on. I just remove the studies there. You can see that would look to come in today anyway like this and you can see yeah coming in around 30 34 35 so definitely one to have marked up later on but of course we'll we'll do a rundown uh, closer to the time and during the session uh, as well other currencies euro just coming up to quite an interesting level it, while we did spike through it last week in the ecb you can see 112.04 just over the last few trading sessions has been pretty key as a zone with maybe a few ticks either side it was also the high that we had back on the 24th and yesterday with the r1 uh, and that's just coming into or just came into play a bit earlier to the downside you can see we are just starting to make these higher lows but that gives the opportunity that if the trend line was to break it's much like the pound you can get that continuation to the downside uh, again not being too aggressive on on the fed day uh, in the anticipation uh, of, of that event people will be waiting for that uh, but you can see again like the pound you've got those free tests or more uh, so at least we know the market is looking at that gold as well. We expect to be uh, a decent mover later on come seven o'clock and into the press conference at, at half seven. We, we reached yesterday that really key level. And again, it is a zone much like the euro was just of key resistance going back from. Well, I mean, this is really since the middle uh, of the month. Obviously, the last trading day of the month today. So that's something to factor in. But quite a lot of uh, highs around this point. And we are just obviously uh, testing that again this morning, having found some resistance. That multi-month trend line, let's just get it on from a shorter period just to see if we did get a retest of that. Almost. Oh, well, we did, to be fair, exactly on, on the point. So we're looking at this around the R1 yesterday. Uh, if it was to come in during the briefing, it didn't. So we came up, first test of that trend line, and we can't really get much better than that and that looks like it will come in again around the r1 so maybe the opportunity later is if they're ultra dovish break of that trend and and looking to get up to uh, some higher points going back to uh, the 19th but at the moment that's holding very firm and uh, this morning i would definitely have that that marked up on the chart uh, as well quick look over oil obviously you've got the the doe uh, later and you can see the api and um even though we did come down uh, in the back end of the session, really, we were still elevated. Uh, looking here, just on that 60 minute, I'm just going to make it a bit smaller. You can see we did come up to test quite a key point. Had a little go at trying to break through around 58.50, the higher the 17th, holding uh, strong on that first test. Decent price action uh, around this point in previous sessions as well. From a, a range bound trade, the pivot offers like a, a good area. But also, can we get back to at any point today around 57.65, previous high that we had on the 24th, and as a zone, you've got the, the high of yesterday morning. It seems quite far away, uh, and if we were to keep pushing higher, and this might be later on, uh, you can see a really key point around 59.30, the low of the 15th. Uh, we have just looked to have broken out of this, uh, this mini range that we've been in for oil. Uh, we were getting squeezed in, as we saw, uh, from the beginning of the week 
that breakthrough, albeit quite choppy, uh, has led to a decent uh, push higher over the last couple of days. However, some of these interesting resistance points uh, just above where we are uh, trading. Quick look at the, the DAX to see how we're, we're doing on the uh, 30 minutes past the open. Relatively choppy. You can see yesterday's move was, uh, was, was pretty strong and that break of that trend line just before the open didn't help things uh, for the DAX or, of course, in, in Europe, uh, in the US as well, which followed suit. Today, much more lacklustre uh, in, in movement, much like the pound yesterday. So after a decent move to the upside or the downside, likely it is you aren't going to get a continuation of that uh, straight away. Some important resistance just above the highs of the day, going back to yesterday. Uh, you can see here around 130, uh, 12,177, and then just above the pivot as well, you've got some quite key resistance. Worth keeping an eye later on any trend lines that maybe appear from those uh, the downside, much like the euro and the pound and the S&P, maybe wait for those breaks to, to get the, the, the market agreeing with any bias you had to the downside. Might be favourable for, for the DAX rather than uh, looking to go too aggressively short from where we're trading uh, now uh, as well. Any questions as usual, uh, please uh, do let us know. As Ant mentioned, we'll be on from half six and uh, myself and, and Anna will be looking over some uh, of the charts in more detail then as well. Hope to see you later. If not, I hope you'll have a uh, great trading day.